That kind of scared me. Navigational complexities. Speaking of complexities, that whole situation, the Elidians and the Hotari is pretty complex. I did summarize it for you guys Mr. when I had the chance to. I understand you have already it. discussed the warp drive failure with Ambassador Spock. I have. It is imperative that the Ambassador's shuttle be flight ready. I need you both to ascertain the root cause of the system failures he encountered. I'm surprised, Commander. I thought you would have wanted to work on Ambassador Spock's shuttle yourself. I respect the Ambassador and his many accomplishments, but I do not derive any satisfaction from interacting with his shuttle as if it were somehow transubstantiated through its association with him. <laughs> Especially when I have the entirety of this starship to concern myself with. <laughs> He's like, it's I below me. I am the me. chief engineer of this shuttlecraft. The ambassador asked me to take a look, and I'm ready to crack this thing open. Good. You could learn from Mr. Diaz's focus. I'll take notes. Then I will leave you to it. Make note of any abnormalities in your report. Carry on. It seems like he's warming up to us. Yeah. Even Chovok has to look at that face and know you've earned some real respect. And I have to admit that I owe you one. You were right mm. to make me go first. Don't I forget don't know what it. I was thinking. <laughs> you did the smart thing. Uh. You've pulled me out of trouble how many times? Call it even. Okay. At the very least, maybe I can track down that bottle of sorry and brandy you're still on the hook for. But first, we have work to do. But first, I must phase you to death. <laughs> I'm just being such a likable character All with both of them. Set. Let's run the diagnostic. He seems like a nice guy, you know? Um, I play, I feel like I'm playing him a little bit more emotionally though. <laughs> well, I wonder why I'm playing him as uh, more playful. I know about your talk with Miranda. You, you do? She sent me a priority one dispatch right after your conversation. Oh. I'm happy for you. Both of you. <sighs> Thanks. But I'm only going to tell you this once. Don't screw this up. Because I would be very unhappy if you tried this out and then, I don't know, six weeks or six days later, I have to start splitting holidays between the two of you. All because things went south and you're not on speaking terms. <laughs> that just isn't gonna work for me. And I know you'll respect that. Are you? Upset? <laughs> Not on your life, Diaz. But you need to be careful. I like my friends and I like our group. I don't want to lose that. Yeah. Is that thing done yet? Yeah. yeah it's wrapping up. Let's see. The relays along the primary EPS. I can are understand that. The backup relays are all intact. An EPS overload from the warp drive could cause that. But how did the shuttle end up dead in the water? Huh. Well, maybe the ship's data recorder can tell us something. Circuit inspector? Wait, <laughs> I picked the circuit inspector for sure. Here. They were only about eight minutes from their plotted warp point. No faults, just those warnings. What are they? Boop, boop. Beep, beep. <laughs> Subspace variance out of tolerance. What does that mean? It means the main navigation array lost sight of space somehow. Will the array going offline cause that? Yes, but it should have also thrown a fault code. Beep, beep. <laughs> I'm taking this very seriously. The warp field became inverted suddenly. 
I've seen this happen when the center warp coil cracks. A cracked warp coil throws a fault code. Still, we should take a look. There was a complete warp cascade failure. Wow. They're lucky the shuttle didn't turn inside out. Makes me think the computer panicked on the warp field equation. Any one of these failures should have thrown a fault. If it was caused by a system failure. None of this caused the relays to blow. Roll forward to when that happened. Yes, ma'am. They're, uh, all of the characters are really good at the people's eyebrow. It's the, some of the rock. I assume he still does it? I don't know. I, don't know. I haven't followed the rock for a while. So here, they take a moment to get their bearings and they attempt to re-engage the warp drive. There. That's the relays blowing. And look, there's another warp system alert. They're all the same. Subspace variants out of tolerance or warp inversions. Finally, there's a complete warp cascade failure. Then it's one of two things. Either a warp coil is cracked or the navigation array is offline. That makes sense. Divide and conquer. You want to check the warp coils or the navigation array? I'll check the other. Let's not overcomplicate this. One of these systems is likely broken. Ooh. Warp coil sounds good. I'll check the nacelles for a cracked coil. That was a tough choice. <laughs> it's the easiest one so far. I have no idea what <laughs> half of this stuff means. <laughs> Your tricorder can record and analyze data. Looking through it will reveal the unseen. X to equip and holster, right trigger to scan. Glowing objects, oh, that's nice. Must be close to some objects to scan them. Watch the frame of the screen to see if you're too far away. Anomaly targeted. Some objects you scan will activate a deep scan. During a deep scan, you use left shoulder button and right shoulder button to switch between are they bumpers or shoulder buttons? I guess it's bumper, right? And also that's shorter to say. I always said shoulder buttons. Switch between different scan modes and search for glowing objects. This is uh, Star Trek, the search for glowing objects. We already found Spock. So uh, we're done with that. Um, the mode indicators on the tricorder will blink if there's an object to find in that mode. Let me just get this out of here. Uh, Cause I'm using a controller. Okay. When you have a scanned, oh, sorry, when you have scanned all objects, the frame will change color. Left trigger to analyze the data and finish the scan. Uh, oh, cam. Here's the glowing. The center coils guide the warp field through its focal event, maintaining a collimated thrust vector. No fractures detected. Static field. In their standby state, warp coils produce a residual electromagnetic field. No deviations detected. Okay, how do I. Oh, there's more. Uh, polyferronide de depositions. The leading coils show evidence of routine maintenance to repair micro abrasions from neutrino interaction. It says complete scan. I checked every coil on the port and cell for imbalances. If any coil in either engine were cracked, I would have detected it. So it must be the navigation array. Except it's not. Checked and double checked. Well, the readings don't lie. Here comes the security detail for the way team. Is there like a pulse from the anomaly that interfered? Hey. I'm not here. <laughs> Awkward. 
Harper. We're escorting the negotiating team to the surface as soon as they come down from the bridge. I don't want to interrupt some important work. I was just hoping to see you before I go. The captain and the others will be here any minute now. Should be an interesting ride down to the surface. Hmm. You're the one with the important job to do. Keeping the captain safe. And Ambassador Spock. It doesn't always feel that way. Baking in the hot sun, standing guard next to an empty shuttlecraft. But it has its moments. Hey, Maris. Aren't these those button pushers you're always hanging out with? And you're the phaser jockeys we always beat in Parisi squares, right? Hell yeah. All aboard for Hotari. That another one of the captain's railroad things? <laughs> Gotta be. I just usually zone out by the time he gets to the whole uh, steam engines were the warp drives of their day part. Oh yeah, we saw that in his uh, quarters, there. right? You don't want to miss your train. I do have to go. Not gonna lie, I'd rather not leave right now. More important things on my mind. Do it! This might be the last time you see her. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah, it was. Save some of that for when I get back. You got a deal. The animation is a little awkward on that kid. It's just me. <laughs> be seeing you. Uh. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I'm enjoying it though. Like it's like it's it's sweet. It's adorable. It's Larda Diaz. If you could float back down to reality, we still have a ways to go. All right, where were we? So the warp coils in the navigation array are fine, but the nav computer doesn't seem to think so. I'm out of ideas short of field stripping the shuttle from bow to stern. You want to take this out of the shuttle and throw it on the bench? Oh, real hands on maintenance. I like it. Let's go. Okay, the nav computer is patched into the ship. The ship's computer can double check our work. If the shuttle's nav computer is putting out false data, we'll know it. Let's run through the shuttle's logs again. Running now. So someone uh, mentioned in the comment section that uh, some Telltale people uh, are part of this studio, which is cool. I can I can feel the DNA, that's for sure. Same. Warp field inversion and a cascade failure. However, the Resolute computer doesn't show the same subspace variance. We're in the same conditions that the shuttle was in when it failed. Why wouldn't the ship's computer get a matching result? What if... The subspace variance was a momentary occurrence. That's a possibility, and it would explain why the simulation under our current sensor readings failed to reproduce the issue. But a subspace anomaly strong enough to cause a warp field collapse would leave graviton ripples for days. Let's run with the momentary subspace variance theory for now. Roll forward to the shuttle's attempt to re-engage the warp drive. We need the conditions of space around the shuttle at the moment of warp failure. Resuming simulation. I could be a Star Trek officer. Start member of Star Trek. You just have to... calculation. Cochrane formula variables are out of range. Oh, Cochran! He's the one that invented the shuttle sensor data from that moment. Computer, why warp did the drive, warp field right? calculation fail? Warp field pressure return non-orthogonal. Results are undefined. And that doesn't help. Wait, what if we use a different ship? Put the Resolute into the simulation instead of the shuttle. Yeah, it should warp just fine. Unless... Computer, run the simulation with the Resolute. Resolute simulated. Computer, give me manual control on the warp power. All I have to do is press the right stick. Being a Federation officer is easy. Static field intensity. 
warp pressure is destabilizing. Error in warp field calculation. The warp drive has experienced a system-wide cascade failure. Warp field collapsed. Subspace variance is out of tolerance. Cochrane formula results are undefined. Bingo. what -o? The same moment when the shuttle failed to warp, so did the ship. Whatever happened to the shuttle just happened to us. The Resolute will not sustain warp. We can't leave Hotari space. Is it possible the Hotari are responsible for this? Just based on what we learned in the last video? I'll kind of go over... Uh... Actually, this would be a good time. Um, so we learned last time, since we're going into Hotari space, well, there's the Elidians that provided the technology and the Hotari are doing uh, the labor for mining dilithium on their moon, I believe, the, the uh, Elidian's moon. The Hotari took control of the mining operations by force. The Elidians have a stronger military because of their advanced technology, but the storm is evening out the gap. It's interfering with the Elidians' technology. But it's the Hotari that requested mediation from the Federation. Um, but the Federation is buying Dilithium from the Elidians. Complicated mess. And I kind of didn't totally absorb it, so I went through the video again just to make some notes so I understood it, because we're going to have to make some tough choices here. Lieutenant Bedrosian said, I think it was her that said, that they're being exploited. Um, but we're not sure. And as Jara, we're going to covertly learn all we can about the situation. I guess we're going to pretend like we're not part of the Federation. I don't know how that's going to work out. So that's the situation here, in case you guys don't remember. It's a beautiful uh, planet. Seat of Power. Ambassador Spock, Captain Solano, welcome to Hotari. We are honored you've come. My name is Tylus Altaris, Minister of Diplomatic Affairs. The honor is ours, and this is Commander Jara Rydick, first officer Wait, how, aboard but the USS We're Resolute. being presented as... You'll find she has a keen mind and unique insight into the dynamics between the Hotari and the Lydians. I thought that we were going to... Okay, maybe I was wrong about what we were planning. We are honored to be here as representatives of the Federation. I'm so glad... These must be the representatives of the mighty Federation. The reigning authority in the galaxy. Or so we've been led to believe. Whether that's true or not remains to be seen. But, either way, we're grateful you've made the time to come to our little corner of the universe. And you are? This is Galvin, and this is Citron. The heroes of the revolt in the mines. Seem very direct. I like the way they look. Got a little uh, scar on his cheek. Yeah, the designs are cool. I Let's assume... hope this is the last time we ever have to come here. If you'll excuse me. I assume these are unique aliens. I don't remember seeing them, but I haven't watched all like TNG and T Deep Space Nine are my I main think shows. We're about to begin. I watched a bit of Voyager, but after that, I never really followed Star Did you Trek. Hear the arrogance from that guy? I don't know what we're walking into here, but that guy was something. Yeah. That may be true, but let's keep an open mind going into the negotiations. Hopefully, he's just one voice amongst many. Then let's hope he's the outlier. The Hotari have invited us as their guests, so we must show them the proper respect. I don't think Spock likes the captain that much. I think he likes us more. I guess I could check the relationships, but I'm, I'm fine. I, I get it. Spock likes us. Captain doesn't like us so much. We didn't follow his order. Yeah, the designs are cool, eh? Uh, 
Uf. That seems to be what they did, right? Ambassador Spock, welcome to Holtari Prime. The honor is mine, your majesty. That the Federation would send one of their most respected representatives is not only an honor to the Hotari people and their queen, but a recognition of our stature and importance. Let's get on with it, shall we? With all due respect to the Federation and their ambassador, they have no authority here. We are not members of their alliance. We are not subject to their rule, nor yours. We demand the immediate return of all mining operations to Elydian control, as it has been for centuries and will be for centuries more. That has always been our understanding. That understanding has changed. Then you invite war! And if you cannot remain silent, you will be silenced. Ooh. But his point is well taken. What is the Federation's interest in this matter? Perhaps you would have us trade one oppressor for another? The Federation remains neutral. Our only interest is the peaceful resolution of this conflict. We are here at your request, Your Majesty. For now. I'm trying to keep an open mind here, but it's not easy. I thought they wanted us here. Mm. Was there something you wanted to say, Captain? Oh. No. My apologies. And what about Bacobliad? She's not part She can of... speak for herself, can't she? Then let her. They asked for us to be here, but yeah. Cool, this is gonna be a tough one, isn't it? Now then, what is your name? Commander Jara Rydek, Your Majesty. Being a Kovliad, you would know better than anyone. Your people suffered brutal treatment at the hands of the Cardassians. Ah. Uh. Their injustice towards the Kovliad is as unimaginable as it is unforgivable. Not unlike how we have been treated by the Alidians. As much as they'd have you believe they are the victims here, remember it was the Hotari who attacked us. Hundreds of innocent Elidians were slaughtered without mercy in those mines. Oh. The blood is on their hands, not ours. Quiet! Okay. If after all the Kobliad suffered, you finally had the chance to right that wrong, to get out from under their control, would you take it? Or would you negotiate a peace? <sighs> oh. We don't, it's not exactly the same, right? I can't speculate on something that never happened, Your Majesty. Sadly, that opportunity never came for the Kobliad. No, it did not. But we'd be wise to learn from their example before we too find ourselves facing extinction. We're being honest, I think. The Federation is the most powerful, most advanced alliance in the galaxy. It's widely known we have an abundance of dilithium in our minds. And it's in your interest to secure a steady supply. Your Majesty, if I may. Ambassador Spock would have us believe you're here as a neutral party in the interest of peace. So why are you really here? I want the truth, not your Federation rhetoric. As Ambassador Spock has said, we've come seeking a peaceful resolution to this conflict and have no interest in your dilithium. I'm not nearly as naive as you must Oh, say. well, I mean, she didn't have to say that. The Federation has business with the Elidians for decades, which makes me question your motives. Uh-oh. What they haven't said, but cannot deny, is a simple truth. The dilithium trade would not and will no longer exist without a Lydian involvement. That might have been the wrong choice. We created it for the benefit of everyone. 
especially the Hotari. We've given them warp technology. We've let them share in the profits. We've made their lives infinitely better than before Dilithium was discovered. All of that goes away if the Federation turns a blind eye to their we don't have a, I don't think we have a great sense of that how they were treated. of your lies. Uh-oh. The Hotari are quite capable of running the mines. We've done so for centuries. So tell me, who deserves control of the dilithium trade and the mines on town? Who should the Federation recognize? The Hotari or the Alidians? No! Only be one or the other, not both. <laughs> if I have to choose only one, then it would have to be the Hotari. Well said. How could the just and wise Federation make any other choice? <gasps> this is an outrage. The Federation has lost all credibility. The mines are ours. Lydia will not be deterred. Take back our minds by any means necessary. I've never seen more blood spilled. I think we fucked I'm up, more guys. I'm willing to address your concerns, Your Majesty. Yours as well, Representative. But I suggest we could have a more productive conversation with a smaller group. Perhaps only the most essential representatives. I suppose there is some sense to that. I think she played to our emotions pretty well because I kind of was more compelled by her argument, even though they took it by force. It sounds like <sighs> the Elidians were again, rough on them, it sounds Rai. like. I feel like she kind of played us. What would you guys have chosen? And I will cover everything on the diplomatic front. You make nice with the locals and see if you can get some answers. We need to find out why the Hotari are so willing to risk war. Okay. What happened in those mines? Also, I kind of disagree. Speak with members of each faction. I kind of disagree with the idea that we don't want peace, that we're like, I mean, yes, we do want the dilithium to keep flowing, but Spock, I think Spock, the captain and I, we spoke earlier, we did focus more on the idea that peace was the most important thing, right? I, I think I'm still happy with my answers. I wouldn't choose differently. Oh, yeah, we can run. Such rough terrain. No wonder the Hotari are so tough. They literally have rocks on their face. Sidron. Commander, I'm glad you've chosen to side with the Hotari. I knew the Federation would see through the Elidians' baseless claims and protect the interests of my people. Now we're trying to get on their side, so... The Hotari have suffered enough at the hands of the Elidians. I couldn't agree more. I assume you were there the day the mines were seized from the Elidians. Not seized. Reclaimed and restored to their rightful owners. Yes, I was there. We had to be decisive before the Elidians could even realize their worst nightmares upon them. Ah. Did you have help from someone else? Hotari stands alone against the Elidian forces. We don't need help from anyone. They respect one thing above all else, and that is force. The greater the force, the more certain the outcome. 
Any talk of making peace is just that, and worth little without the strength to secure it. Which makes me wonder about your ship, the Resolute. Undoubtedly the Federation's finest warship. Ready to contend with anything the Illidians might have in store. Uh oh. Or is that not true? Uh... Maybe I've misjudged it. I wouldn't say state of the art, but the Resolute is plenty capable and can hold its own against just about anything. Let's hope so. Because at the moment, it's the only thing preventing them from wiping us off the map. Sidron. A pleasure meeting you, Commander. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I'm going to be lying a bit here, like choosing, because because we're doing our job here. We're trying to get in good with them so that they'll share information, right? Appreciate water. It keeps us alive. Hmm. Soothing. <laughs> Look at a little glitchy there. <laughs> I am curious though, so do we... Okay, we don't have relationships with the uh, Hotari. What is the captain? Captain Solano thought Jera handled a complex situation as well as could be expected when the Hotari Queen put her on the spot in the Queen's Chamber. Okay. What about Ambassador Spock? Ambassador Spock thought Jera performed well under pressure when she was being questioned by the Hotari Queen. Okay, good. Commander Rydeck? I'm encouraged to see the Federation supporting my people. I'm afraid of what might happen without your help. Um... I'm glad to hear it. I just hope you're not the only one who feels that way. I apologize for that. These are unusual times, to say the least. Much is changing. I saw you speaking with Sidron, our national hero. I'm curious, what did he say? He seems to be of the opinion that negotiating for peace is a waste of time. Because force is the only blunt instrument he understands. Mm. He's a miner, not a diplomat. For the first time in our history, the Hotari have the upper hand. We see ourselves as strong instead of downtrodden. New voices have risen up. Old voices shouted down. Galvin and Sidron have become national heroes. Now, they have the Queen's ear. Better or worse, depending on your perspective. I get the sense you don't exactly trust them. I don't trust their instincts, which are leading us to war. My fear has been that the Illidians will launch an attack and crush us. You've seen their starship, no doubt. They could have retaken the mines whenever they wanted to, but it never happened. And as strange as this may sound, I'd almost say they're afraid. I just don't know what they're afraid of. Huh. It's still the same bluster and bravado you would expect from them. But it has no teeth. Like they're afraid of what might happen. Should we confide about the storm? Let's be honest, she's, she's being honest with us. Do you think it has something to do with the Ion Storm? Right now, it's stronger than ever, isn't it? It's entirely possible. I'm not a scientist, but I do know the storm has knocked out all kinds of systems. So maybe the Illidians weren't willing to risk their ships, given all the interference. Since the day of the revolt, Galvin has seized control of the mines and restricted all access. No one's allowed without his personal authorization. And they've taken over a section of the palace with just as much secrecy and security. Yeah, okay. I'm told it could be something they brought back from the mines. Oh. They've made inquiries, but everyone pretends it doesn't exist. I strongly suspect they're hiding something. They she doesn't know what it is. What do you is. think it is? I've heard rumors it's some sort of ancient artifact, but I haven't seen it myself. That's what's causing the How can we storm, maybe. I'd better see what's happening. This is so Do you good! Think you can find out what they're hiding? 
I need to see proof of something before I can make my case to the Federation. I can try, but even if I found it, I might not know what to make of it. Take this. You can use it to capture whatever you find, and then send it to me. Thank you. I will let you know what I find. And I look forward to our meeting again. Like, this is really good. Just me? And the design of the aliens is, looks really nice. Sorry, I couldn't help but notice you were speaking with the Hotari this whole time. I figured in the interest of fairness, I should offer another perspective. Of course. Okay, good. I'm probably not telling you anything you don't already know, but these negotiations rely on the Federation's neutrality, as does any hope you might have for a supply of dilithium in the future. So why you would choose to side with the Hotari escapes me. Without a Lydian involvement, there is no dilithium trade. But clearly, you weren't aware. Uh, hmm. Of all my concerns, dilithium is not one of them. I could care less about securing a supply, now or in the future. I'd be curious to know if the rest of the Federation shares your indifference. Now, we said that that could be something we could Major use. Major Solid Arminta, Special Attaché, Elidian Armed Forces. Pleasure to meet you. Maybe we're, not, maybe we're not using it, but... I have my issues with the Hotari, but I have to give them some credit. They know how to seize an opportunity. Inciting an uprising the same day as a massive once-in-a-lifetime ion storm. Our assumption was that this storm was just an anomaly. Yes, a very convenient anomaly. At least, that was what we were told. Of course, I wasn't there. But who am I to say otherwise? Hmm. I was thinking maybe someone was helping them, but this relic sounds like that's what caused it. Something tells me there's more to the story. So what really happened? Well, the official story is that it was the storm that enabled the revolt. How else do a bunch of unarmed, unorganized miners seize control of an entire moon, much less thousands of mine? But I've talked to people who were there. They tell a different story. They say they're lucky to have escaped with their lives. That it was more than just the storm. That somehow the miners were able to harness the energy from the storm. I know it sounds crazy. I'm not even sure I believe it myself. Hmm. But that's what they said. Hmm. You said the Hotari were primitive. Well, they are. Except for the part about weaponizing ion storms. If you'll excuse me, Commander Ryder. I think I understand more now about what they meant by being like covert. It's not that we were, weren't gonna pretend we were with the Federation because that would have been kind of weird. That's just showing up. It's that while they're negotiating, we were gonna find out as much information as possible. And I feel like we found out a fair amount. Appreciate the lights. Running down the hallway, looking at the banners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I devil fuck, guys. Well, that was a disaster. What happened? The Hotari refused to concede anything, so the Elidians stormed out. The Hotari did not invite us here as peacekeepers. I hope your efforts were more fruitful than ours. So we are downplaying the Dilithium and they're upplaying it. <laughs> 